Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for your time. Just tell us how your system works. I believe it's for early stage infection. It's non-invasive. It's easy to use. That's absolutely correct. And um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share our development, um, Sally. And welcome to all the viewers. Our, our system is really, um, it's twofold beneficial. The one is that it's really simple. And the second is it's a total solution. It is somewhat more advanced than the traditional CPAP or half-flow nasal um, cannula systems. And the reason for that is that it's based on an electronic um, measuring and monitoring control system. So what does this all really mean in simple language? It's a bi-level um, system where it controls people's flow of oxygen and um, air into their um, lungs as the machine machine is doing currently and it also gives it a reprieve to allow people to actually breathe out I'm just going to jump in, I'm just going to jump in there because yeah. you're getting very technical and I'm already confused so it's by level <laughs> and that's different from what we know of the CPAP which is continuous positive airways pressure so this is a slightly different system right that's correct so okay. to to differentiate the two a CPAP is a continuous flow of air, whereas the BiPAP effectively has a reprieve. And on the clinical treatment, what that allows the doctors and the clinicians to do is to put more air into the patient in the inflow, and then the reprieve reduces the amount of flow and allows the patient to exhale on their own. And that's the the key difference to this. All right, and is that how uh, your system differs for the one, from the one that the National Ventilator Project is putting together? Sure, well the National Ventilator Program has had um, two phases in it. And in the first phase, it was essentially a mechanical ventilation system. And ours is an electronic system, which was significantly more complex and obviously more expensive. Mm. And under that um, program, we actually withdrew because we weren't racing in the same horse race, to put it in simple terms. In the second phase, they're looking more towards a CPAP-type ventilator, mm -hmm. which is obviously more advanced and somewhat more sophisticated. And the bar level is one step above that in the treatment of covid and obviously it has a laugh after COVID because you can use it for of course. other ailments. Now I understand you've got 15 units which you're currently testing out in various hospitals. And it's interesting, I understand that you all have, you have some of the units in hospitals in KwaZulu-Natal. We know, of course, that the peak is coming for KwaZulu-Natal. How are they performing, your units? So the performance has taken place in laboratory circumstances. The second leg of this is to take it to the clinicians and to the nursing staff because we have to teach people and get acceptance that the product is accepted by the people that are going to work with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's primarily where we are. We've got three environments where we're busy um, testing the product. The one is down in KZN where we've had um, clinicians and doctors examining, testing, um, trying it out themselves in simple terms. Um, the second environment is down in the province of the Eastern Cape, which you know is also under severe um, COVID conditions. And then because we're based in Johannesburg, we've been up the road to the local um, hospitals and spoken to various ICU specialists that are dealing with this and taken our guidance from them. And uh, the beauty of this is, I understand it doesn't have to be in an ICU environment. And these non-invasive ventilators can be used in any ward, simple to use. And you even have batteries uh, for if there's a power cut. That's correct. So, Sally, I'm not a doctor. I'm certainly not a clinician. And I'm certainly not one of the engineers that developed the unit. And I was able to set this machine up sitting behind me in basically about 10 minutes. We believe there's about 30 minutes of training and there's a lot of repeat in that training. And uh, more importantly, that it's standalone and can be used remotely. So 
why are we talking about the BiPAP with so much emphasis? Is that we know that oxygen is scarce, okay? And hand in hand with that, the BiPAP unit is hugely more efficient in using oxygen than high flow nasal cannula systems. And to give you some bearing on that, this system will use about five liters per minute, whereas the alternative treatments are using 15 to 20 litres of oxygen a minute. You know, it's so great to hear about South African innovation, speaking uh, as I was a few weeks ago to the National Ventilator Project, how people uh, turn their skills to what is required. And this sounds like you're doing uh, a similar thing, albeit with a, a different device. What is the next step for you? And is this something that you are trying to market internationally as well? So, Sally, we have lots of um, engineers and lots of collective wisdom, and this product actually does have uh, an alternative of using pure CPAP. It has the second alternative of a BiPAP level, and then we're in the process of and have essentially finalized the program of reverse ratio patient support, which is slightly more sophisticated settings on the machine, and... Um, well in line with that, the initial design of this is around an interactive human-machine interface, or HMI monitoring. 